Hey, Mr. Myas is here, and this is uh, video lesson 1-2A, because remember, I, don't, I like to break these guys up for you. So the first one, I'm just going to talk about functions and domain and range for this video, okay? So we're looking at functions and domain and range. In my next video, I'll talk about inverse, and in a, another video, I'll talk about graphing adjustments. So we're going to break this up in about four videos, short, four short videos here, so you can, you can break it apart for you. So... I encourage you here to look and read the definition of a relation and a function. And we're going to be using the vertical line test in just a second. The domain and the range, the set of all x values or the set of all y values in which our function can be defined. So here are some examples. Let's determine whether or not these are a function of x. Okay, so x plus y equals 1. This is a line y equals 1 minus x. Now let's zoom in here to look at each of these. And this is just a line, right? A line, and a line is in fact a function of x. So yes, this is a function of x. Now, what about x squared plus y equals 1? That's a circle. If we use the vertical line test, notice here that it crosses twice for a vertical line. This is not a function of x. No, it's not a function of x. So, again, the vertical line test, if it crosses more than once in a vertical line, it is not a function of x. y equals negative x squared plus 1. This is a parabola, like this, right? One of our 12 basic functions, or our basic parent functions. So this is yes. Now, if we did this this one, let me go back to number two real quick. If we did this one algebraically, and we looked at solving for y, we're going to have y squared equals 1 minus x squared. And when we solve for y, when we take the square, square root of both sides, we have to take the plus or minus square root. Now, the plus is this top part. The minus is this bottom part. Anytime we see a plus or minus, it's going to tell us it's not a function, all right? Or not a function of x. Let's look at x. Uh, again, look, here we go. We've got one here that we're doing just like 1 minus x. We've got plus or minus, right? So we see that plus or minus. We're going to say no, it is not. Furthermore, if we graph this, this is going to be a sideways facing parabola. So sideways facing parabola is not going to pass our vertical line test. All right, so that's some, uh, that's our basic functions if we decide we want to find a function. If we want to plug in values for function or evaluate functions, uh, we have this notation, f of 10. What does that mean? That means plug 10 into our f function. So f of 10 is going to be 3 times 10 minus 1, which is 29, right? g of x plus delta x means take x delta x, plug it in anywhere we see an x in our g function. So that's going to be x plus delta x squared. And we're going to multiply that out just for this one, I think. So this would be sufficient, right? Because I said you don't have to simplify. So I actually don't suggest you simplify. But if you did, it would look like this. Plus delta x squared. And just in case you wanted to uh, simplify it. Eh, you don't have to in this case because I didn't ask you to. g of f of x, this is a composite function. It means put in f of x wherever g was. So I'm sorry, for every x in our g function. So that f of x was 3x minus 1. So that's equal to 3x minus 1 squared. I'm going to take this entire thing and put it in here for x. f fog fog is f of g of x so that's just another way of writing a composite function so g of x was x squared so i'm going to take x squared and plug it in anywhere i see an x in the f function all right so there are some composite functions or evaluating functions let's look at finding domain and range so um, in order to find range we're going to have to graph it for domain we can actually take a domain restriction here x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 because I can't have a negative in my square root. So I know my domain is going to be x greater than 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in a, uh, you know, or you can write it like this. Either way is sufficient for this class. 
Now, for the range, we're going to need to graph it. So graphing x square root of x minus 1, that's a square root function shifted over like that. So we can see that our y values have to be greater than or equal to 0. Here we have a restriction that x minus 2 cannot be 0. The denominator cannot be equal to 0. So I know that x cannot be equal to 0. So that's my domain. x is not equal to 2, to two once I solve this. Okay, or you can write it as um, negative infinity to 2 and 2 to infinity. My range, I'm going to have to graph this. This is a reciprocal function with a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So uh, my range is that y cannot be 0. Okay, it's everything but that. All right, so my last one here for domain and range is uh, this picture here. So we can see that we have a horizontal asymptote here, and we have two vertical asymptotes at, it looks like, x equals 0 and x equals 2, and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So my domain are all values that are not 0 and not 2. And my range, um, well, notice here it's anything less than 0. Anything less than 0, but there's this space in here that doesn't have any y values, right? So I'm going to start here at 1 and then go up from there. So I'm also going to say that y is greater than or equal to 1. All right, And I can leave them in that form. I don't have to have them in interval notation, but if I wanted to, I could put them in there. Okay, So there you go. There's just some, uh, some introduction here to uh, functions and domain and range. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.